When training for a triathlon, the first bit of key advice that we could give you is not to be too confused by terminology, reading too many magazines, websites, blogs. The best thing you can do is keep all of your training simple, don't get confused or complicated by too much. The first key bit of advice we'd give you, whether or not you're swimming, cycling or running, is that you train to be able to cover the distance. In order to be able to do this, you have to think about over distance training. If you're swimming 750 metres, we'd advise that you are able to cover in a single session between 1,000 to 1,200 metres. If you're cycling 20 kilometres in the race, we'd advise that you can cover 30 kilometres in a single session. And if your race distance on the run is 5 kilometres, that you can cover between 6 to 7 in a single session. Once you're actually able to cover the race distance, whether or not you're doing the whole race on your own or whether or not you're part of a team, you need to then start thinking about trying to cover that distance a bit more quickly. One key session we'd advise here is that you do something called interval training. This is where you vary the intensity of a session to take yourself out of your comfort zone and then back into a recovery. A great example of an interval session, if you were going to either cycle or run, would be that you start off with a five to ten minute warm up, but then you go into two to three minutes of very high intensity. If you imagine an eight or a nine perceived effort out of ten, then you come back down to a five or six out of ten for three to four minutes. You then repeat this five or six times, taking yourself out of your comfort zone, back to recovery, out of your comfort zone and back down to stimulate the, the muscle fibres and the heart rate to work that little bit harder. Also when training, we'd make sure that we vary our sessions. So an example would be that you have one long session per week that's based around aerobic style of training. You have one session per week that's more what we might call race pace and then you have another session of interval training. Combined, all of these sessions will allow you to promote the kind of results that you want to achieve the best possible race on the day. One other thing you might like to try and do, just for yourself, is that in the early part of your training, you perform a time trial over the given distance that you're going to race. Then, two to three weeks later, perform that time trial exactly the same way in the same environment with the same equipment to see whether or not there's been any improvement in your performance through the training you've been doing. It's really important that when you are training for your triathlon that you vary your training, some of it being indoors and some of it being outdoors. It's great to train indoors because you're able to measure loads of variables whether it be speed, pace, distance, time etc but nothing beats being outside on your bike or certainly with the swimming, being in open water. Doing this will mean that nothing will catch you out on the day. If you're choosing to do the full triathlon on your own, there's one session above all others that we would advise that you do. Triathletes would call them a brick session and it's given the name of a brick session because you're layering one sport on top of another. Most commonly a brick session is a cycle followed immediately by a run. This can be done either indoors or outdoors. A good example of a brick session would be a 20 minute cycle at race pace followed by a two mile run at race pace. Then immediately another 20 minute cycle at race pace followed by another two mile run. And there is a sensation that your legs go through when you come off the bike where they feel like jelly the more you can do of these sessions, you'll feel fully prepared on the day and nothing will catch you out.